This is Access Door County, and I am your host, Victoria Sarenich. Today's guest is Dr. Peter Sigmund, a resident of Gardner. He lives near the shore, and he's very interested in water, and he wants to talk about water quality with us today. You got Peter? that right, Victoria. I appreciate telling your viewers about what we're finding in the waters of Green Bay, and specifically uh, the Bay of Little Sturgeon. Uh, the Bay of Little Sturgeon is uh, shown on this picture here. Uh, it opens to the north. Uh, it is probably the major fish spawning area in the Green Bay system. And uh, I am very much interested in my environment, and the environment right outside my door is the Bay of Little Sturgeon. In 2001, we started getting concerned about the absence of any kind of data on the water of Green Bay and the other bays. Back in the 1960s and 1970s, there was a lot of information about the pollution of the Bay of Green Bay, specifically uh, the, the high nutrient count specifically phosphate. And at that time, there was also a lot of problem with algae. And at that time, too, uh, major legislation took place where phosphate was taken out of laundry detergents and TSP was outlawed. And uh, there was a time when the problem seemed to go away and everybody stopped watching. So uh, without being urged by anybody, we started looking because uh, we were very much concerned about little sturgeon becoming eutrophic, eutrophied, which means having a lot of weeds that um, decompose and use up all the oxygen. And uh, that would be the end of the fish production in Little Sturgeon Bay. So, Peter, if I could interrupt just a second. You observed right at the water edge, right by your home, you observed changes in Little Sturgeon? Uh, actually, not in 2001. Okay. Uh, the big Pladafa issue is now maybe six, seven years old. So mm -hmm. we actually were ahead and had the opportunity of watching this develop. And um, in the outer bay, which is uh, the measuring point here, uh, we saw high phosphate levels from time to time and extremely high phosphate levels. The upper, the upper curve is the maximum and the lower curve is the average reading. And that went on until about 2007 and it started in 2004. Uh, and uh, we thought, well, this comes from the littoral current of, of Green Bay and uh, spills in here because in the back bay where we also test, uh, we didn't have the high readings in those early years. Uh, as time went on, though, the picture changed. The outer bay um, has not had high phosphate readings in the last three years, but the back bays had very high readings. And they were actually, it's a different scale, they were actually higher compared to the, um, the outer bay. So, Peter, you tested at three points. Right. At, the, at the mouth of the bay and then in, further in the bay where the water was shallower and it's closer to more land. Correct and much shallower, right. Um, at that point, well, we worried about lawn phosphate, uh, fertilizer, we worried about uh, septic systems. Um, but the lawn fertilizer went away, uh, the phosphate anyway, uh, and uh, the septic systems were all taken care of. In, in the area. Uh, so um, we looked a little further and starting in 2012 we, st we uh, went to an additional point here on the shore which is about uh, 300 feet away from our lake uh, sampling area, a uh, private well right close to the shore, a shallow well, and um, we um, did some parallel testing involving the well and this bottom graph shows uh, the well in red and the, the bay in blue. Um, and uh, 
lo and behold, there's a fair amount of um, they agreement. Match. They match they pretty match. much. They match. Uh, we don't always have the same days. Um, if we would be more disciplined and would do it every day, we probably would have an overlap just like we had on this first day. Mm -hmm. Now, these values are extremely high. There are no standards for fast feed in drinking water. Uh, the state of Wisconsin has adopted now standards for, for rivers and streams. And that goes as high as 150 parts per billion. Well, these here are 7,000 parts per billion. Um, and our regular average readings are still um, in the 2,000, 3,000 range. Uh, those are high, very high values um, of phosphate. Uh, the state has agreed to do that with the EPA in order to reduce phosphate coming down the Mississippi into the, into the Gulf of, uh, of Mexico uh, because of the dead zone there. Well, we have a dead zone in Green Bay, which is uh, uh, of great concern to the fishing industry. That and, was uh, just, Peter, that was just reported in uh, all the media this summer. Yeah, but it, it. it's been known for, for about 15 years. Okay. And it's been, been pretty much kept quiet, and uh, it has received more attention lately. Okay. And the area we had on another program, we learned about the karst formation, and how does that contribute to the problems we have with this phosphate reaching our groundwater? Okay, well, this graph kind of nails the argument that the high phosphate in the back bay comes from the groundwater. Now, how does it get in the groundwater? Um, there are no industrial sources of phosphate in the contribution area of Little Sturgeon. Um, there are um, small farms, um, cattle um, um, on, on, on land, very minimal and certainly less than the everywhere. Uh, but what we do see is we get the application of uh, industrial agricultural sewage in quantities of millions of gallons uh, that have the potential to entering the groundwater through cracks in the crust and the lime, limestone. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the slope, the underground slope of the, uh, of the groundwater current is pretty much parallel to the surface current. It goes down to the lake. Uh, the lower the lake, the impermeable rock in the lake is much lower than the impermeable rock on, on land. So it runs down to the lake. And uh, there it wells up, just like on land. Our creeks are also fed by groundwater, but in the summer they do not run. Our creeks are dry. Uh, so we, we don't have any opportunity to measure. In the spring, when, the, when there's big runoff, we will measure again. And we have had, from time to time, very high levels, too, in, in the streams entering Green Bay and Little Sturgeon Bay. You're talking about measuring. Do you have uh, some information about well testing, how to do it, uh, how difficult it is for the average homeowner to okay. check this himself? Well testing, well testing is easy. You can get it done uh, through the um, water department or um, sewage treatment plant in Ephraim. Uh, and their homeowner packages, they do not include phosphate. There's no standard for phosphate. I've tested phosphate in my well, and when it went high, well, we had algae. We got, had discoloration in the water. Mm -hmm. um, so that is of some concern, but it's, it's not a big public health issue. The main problem is that phosphate is the necessary nutrient for algae. And the algae is what concerns us property owners, shoreline property owners, tourists, and so on, because the Gladiophora in the, in the, on the shores can spoil our beaches and our real estate values and our 
and the quality of life and the odor of the air. <laughs> sure. Now you brought a test kit in today, though. Oh yeah, right. Um, well, you know, citizen monitoring doesn't have to be a big thing. It's becoming more important because government is doing less and less. Uh, there's currently a bill pending in, in the state assembly that would prohibit towns and communities to even test their waters. Uh, that has to do with the frac sands. Uh, they don't want to, uh, anybody to, um, to look into it. But uh, this is a very simple um, uh, handheld tool. You fill, you fill uh, the vial with, uh, with water to a certain point. You add um, a reagent that's pre-measured. Uh, shake it for a minute, insert it, put the cap on, push a button, and you get the reading. This is EPA certified. Uh, you can standardize it with, um, with um, standardized test solutions, so which we do. So you can test for different chemicals based on which test solution you choose. Uh, this one is strictly for phosphate. This one's for phosphate. Uh, if you want to do other things, um, it gets more complicated. Okay. In little sturgeon, we also test for nitrate, we test for oxygen content, and uh, have had no problems in those areas. It's just the phosphate. And the phosphate, of course, is what uh, concerns us because of the cladophora. And because of the fisheries there, the spawning area, there, there are a variety of and issues. And the beaches. And the beaches. And I, I'm still uh, nursing uh, uh, repetitive work um, injuries from shoveling all the cladophora out of my bay <laughs> during the summer. So, so what are the next steps for your study? Are you going to continue uh, well testing? Are you looking for more people to yeah. join you and report their findings? Well, uh, as far as the phosphate will continue, we'll do more quick testing and the main thing is to, to uh, put the um, industrial ag people on notice that we're watching. Uh, as long as they're very careful and they don't overdo it and, um, you know, and they do not um, run out of land to spread things, it may be all right. But uh, if they're careless uh, and spread uh, more than um, safe in a particular area, in an area with a lot of fissures, um, then we will have a problem and uh, that will threaten the um, economic viability of our town. And um, that is uh, a major concern. And it could be a concern for Northern Door uh, counties as well, I mean towns just as well. Sure, because you're not speaking of the cattle that are actually living in the area, you're talking about industrial waste that's being brought into the area. That's right. And that could affect any of the communities in Door County. And here in northern Door, there, are, there is less soil, so it could even be more uh, critical to monitor the situation. Uh, was there anything else you'd like to tell people well, about water quality, water testing? Well, water is the Achilles heel of Door County. Um, the, uh, uh, it's a mercy of uh, everything that runs off the fields to get mm -hmm. into our well waters. And uh, well water testing is important. Uh, most of the northern Dole communities have had well tested programs in the last few years, and I think Sebastopol is um, getting the opportunity this spring. Uh, Dole property owners uh, is interested in doing some um, more advanced testing uh, for herbicides and pesticides and so on. Um, with, with the increasing concentration of, of pesticides, uh, uh, it pays to be aware that mm -hmm. if there is a problem because nobody, nobody from government is going to test it. So right. it would have to be a citizen initiative. Right, and so you were speaking of the UW Extension Stevens Point program that uh, several communities in Northern yeah. Door have already participated in. Mm -hmm. And I believe at the October 21st Sevastopol board meeting, there was a proposal on the agenda to determine if Sevastopol was going to participate as well. Uh, 
And as of this moment, I don't know what the results of that board uh, meeting was, but we'd like to thank you very much for coming in today, Dr. Sigmund. Uh, you've been watching Access Door County with your host, Victoria Serenich, and Dr. Sigmund and I have been talking about water quality. Access Door County is carried exclusively on Sevastopol TV, channel 986. Next week's guest will be Sam Perlman, and he will present, present a program on Door County by Local.